Jeremiah chapter 47 This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning the Philistines before Pharaoh attacked Gaza. This is what the Lord says. See how the waters are rising in the north. They will become an overflowing torrent. They will overflow the land and everything in it, the towns and those who live in them. The people will cry out. All who dwell in the land will wail at the sound of the hooves of galloping steeds, at the noise of enemy chariots and the rumble of their wheels. Parents will not turn to help their children. Their hands will hang limp. For the day has come to destroy all the Philistines and to remove all survivors who could help Tyre and Sidon. The Lord is about to destroy the Philistines, the remnant from the coasts of Kaftor. Gaza will shave her head in mourning. Ashkelon will be silenced. You remnant on the plain, how long will you cut yourselves? Alas, sword of the Lord, how long till you rest? Return to your sheath, cease and be still. But how can it rest when the Lord has commanded it, when he has ordered it? to attack Ashkelon and the coast. Jeremiah chapter 48 Concerning Moab This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, Woe to Nebo, for it will be ruined. Kiriathaim will be disgraced and captured. The stronghold will be disgraced and shattered. Moab will be praised no more. In Hezbon, people will plot her downfall. Come, let us put an end to that nation. You, the people of Madman, will also be silenced. The sword will pursue you. Cries of anguish arise from hollow name. Cries of great havoc and destruction. Moab will be broken. Her little ones will cry out. They go up the hill to Luhith, weeping bitterly as they go. On the road down to Horonaim, anguished cries over the destruction are heard. Flee, run for your lives, become like a bush in the desert. Since you trust in your deeds and riches, you too will be taken captive, and Chemosh will go into exile together with his priests and officials. The destroyer will come against every town, and not a town will escape. The valley will be ruined and the plateau destroyed, because the Lord has spoken. Put salt on Moab, for she will be laid waste. Her towns will become desolate, with no one to live in them. A curse on anyone who is lax in doing the Lord's work. A curse on anyone who keeps their sword from bloodshed. Moab has been at rest from youth, like wine left on its dregs, not poured from one jar to another. She has not gone into exile. So she tastes as she did, and her aroma is unchanged. But days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will send men who pour from pitchers, and they will pour her out. They will empty her pitchers and smash her jars. Then Moab will be ashamed of Chemosh, as Israel was ashamed when they trusted in Bethel. How can you say, We are warriors, men, valiant in battle? Moab will be destroyed and her towns invaded. Her finest young men will go down in the slaughter, declares the king, whose name is the Lord Almighty. The fall of Moab is at hand. Her calamity will come quickly. Mourn for her, all who live around her, all who know her fame. Say, how broken is the mighty scepter, how broken the glorious staff. Come down from your glory and sit on the parched ground, you inhabitants of daughter Dibon. For the one who destroys Moab will come against you and ruin your fortified cities. Stand by the road and watch, you who live in Aroa. Ask the man fleeing and the woman escaping. Ask them what has happened. Moab is disgraced for she is shattered. Wail and cry out. Announce by the Arnon that Moab is destroyed. Judgment 
has come to the plateau, to Holon, Jaza, and Mephaeath, to Dibon, Nebo, and beth Dibliathaim, to Kiriathaim, beth Gamal, and beth Meon, to Kirioth and Bozrah, to all the towns of Moab, far and near. Moab's horn is cut off, her arm is broken, declares the Lord. Make her drunk, for she has defied the Lord. Let Moab wallow in her vomit, let her be an object of ridicule. Was not Israel the object of your ridicule? Was she caught among thieves that you shake your head in scorn whenever you speak of her? Abandon your towns and dwell among the rocks, you who live in Moab. Be like a dove that makes its nest at the mouth of a cave. We have heard of Moab's pride, how great is her arrogance, of her insolence, her pride, her conceit, and the haughtiness of her heart. I know her insolence, but it is futile, declares the Lord, and her boasts accomplish nothing. Therefore, I will wail over Moab. For all Moab I cry out, I moan for the people of Kerharaseth. I weep for you as Jazer weeps, you vines of Sibma. Your branches spread as far as the sea, they reached as far as Jazer. The destroyer has fallen on your ripened fruit and grapes. Joy and gladness are gone from the orchards and fields of Moab. I have stopped the flow of wine from the presses. No one treads them with shouts of joy. Although there are shouts, they are not shouts of joy. The sound of their cry rises from Hezbon to Eliela and Jehaz, from Zoar as far as Horonaim and Eglath Shelishia, for even the waters of Nimrin are dried up. In Moab, I will put an end to those who make offerings on the high places and burn incense to their gods, declares the Lord. So my heart laments for Moab like the music of a pipe. It laments like a pipe for the people of ker The wealth they acquired is gone. Every head is shaved and every beard cut off. Every hand is slashed and every waist is covered with sackcloth. On all the roofs in Moab and in the public squares there is nothing but mourning, for I have broken Moab like a jar that no one wants, declares the Lord. How shattered she is! How they wail! How Moab turns her back in shame! Moab has become an object of ridicule, an object of horror to all those around her. This is what the Lord says. Look, an eagle is swooping down, spreading its wings over Moab. Kerioth will be captured and the strongholds taken. In that day the hearts of Moab's warriors will be like the heart of a woman in labor. Moab will be destroyed as a nation because she defied the Lord. Terror and pit and snare await you, you people of Moab declares the Lord. Whoever flees from the terror will fall into a pit. Whoever climbs out of the pit will be caught in a snare. For I will bring on Moab the year of her punishment, declares the Lord. In the shadow of Hezbon, the fugitives stand helpless. For a fire has gone out from Hezbon, a blaze from the midst of Sihon. It burns the foreheads of Moab, the skulls of the noisy boasters. Woe to you, Moab! The people of Chemosh are destroyed. Your sons are taken into exile and your daughters into captivity. Yet I will restore the fortunes of Moab in days to come, declares the Lord. Here ends the judgment on Moab. Jeremiah chapter 49 Concerning the Ammonites... This is what the Lord says. Has Israel no sons? Has Israel no heir? Why then has Molech taken possession of God? Why do his people live in its towns? 
But the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will sound the battle cry against Rabbah of the Ammonites. It will become a mound of ruins, and its surrounding villages will be set on fire. Then Israel will drive out those who drove her out, says the Lord. Wail, Heshbon, for A is destroyed. Cry out, you inhabitants of Rabbah. Put on sackcloth and mourn. Rush here and there inside the walls, for Molech will go into exile, together with his priests and officials. Why do you boast of your valleys, boast of your valleys so fruitful? Unfaithful daughter Ammon, you trust in your riches and say, Who will attack me? I will bring terror on you from all those around you, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Every one of you will be driven away, and no one will gather the fugitives. Yet afterwards, I will restore the fortunes of the Ammonites, declares the Lord. Concerning Edom, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Is there no longer wisdom in Timan? Has counsel perished from the prudent? Has their wisdom decayed? Turn and flee, hide in deep caves, you who live in Dedan. For I will bring disaster on Esau at the time when I punish him. If grape pickers came to you, would they not leave a few grapes? If thieves came during the night, would they not steal only as much as they wanted? But I will strip Esau bare. I will uncover his hiding places, so that he cannot conceal himself. His armed men are destroyed, also his allies and neighbors. So there is no one to say, Leave your fatherless children, I will keep them alive. Your widows too can depend on me. This is what the Lord says. If those who do not deserve to drink the cup must drink it, why should you go unpunished? You will not go unpunished, but must drink it. I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that Bozra will become a ruin and a curse, an object of horror and reproach, and all its towns will be in ruins forever. I have heard a message from the Lord. An envoy was sent to the nations to say, Assemble yourselves to attack it, rise up for battle. Now I will make you small among the nations, despised by mankind. The terror you inspire and the pride of your heart have deceived you, you who live in the clefts of the rocks, who occupy the heights of the hill. Though you build your nest as high as the eagles, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. Edom will become an object of horror. All who pass by will be appalled and will scoff because of all its wounds. As Sodom and Gomorrah were overthrown along with their neighboring towns, says the Lord, so no one will live there, no people will dwell in it. Like a lion coming up from Jordan's thickets to a rich pasture land, I will chase Edom from its land in an instant. Who is the chosen one I will appoint for this? Who is like me, and who can challenge me, and what shepherd can stand against me? Therefore, hear what the Lord has planned against Edom, what he has purposed against those who live in Teman. The young of the flock will be dragged away, their pasture will be appalled at their fate. At the sound of their fall the earth will tremble, their cry will resound to the Red Sea. Look, an eagle will soar and swoop down, spreading its wings over Bozrah. In that day the hearts of Edom's warriors will be like the heart of a woman in labor. Concerning Damascus, Hamath and Arpad are dismayed, for they have heard bad news. They are disheartened, troubled like the restless sea. Damascus has become feeble. She has turned to flee and panic has gripped her. Anguish and pain have seized her, pain like that of a woman in labor. Why has the city of renown not been abandoned, the town in which I delight? Surely her young men will fall in the streets. All her soldiers will be silenced in that day, declares the Lord Almighty. I will set fire to the walls of Damascus. 
it will consume the fortress of Ben-Hadad. Concerning Kedar and the kingdoms of Hazor, which Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon attacked, this is what the Lord says. Arise and attack Kedar and destroy the people of the east. Their tents and their flocks will be taken, their shelters will be carried off with all their goods and camels. People will shout to them, Terror on every side! Flee quickly away. Stay in deep caves, you who live in Hazor, declares the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has plotted against you. He has devised a plan against you. Arise and attack a nation at ease, which lives in confidence, declares the Lord. A nation that has neither gates nor bars, its people live far from danger. Their camels will become plunder and their large herds will be spoils of war. I will scatter to the winds those who are in distant places and will bring disaster on them from every side, declares the Lord. Hazor will become a haunt of jackals, a desolate place forever. No one will live there. No people will dwell in it. This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning Elam, early in the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah. This is what the Lord Almighty says. See, I will break the bow of Elam, the mainstay of their might. I will bring against Elam the four winds from the four quarters of heaven. I will scatter them to the four winds, and there will not be a nation where Elam's exiles do not go. I will shatter Elam before their foes, before those who want to kill them. I will bring disaster on them, even my fierce anger, declares the Lord. I will pursue them with the sword until I have made an end of them. I will set my throne in Elam and destroy her king and officials, declares the Lord. Yet I will restore the fortunes of Elam in days to come, declares the Lord. James chapter 5 Now listen, you rich people. Weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted, and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You've hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you ill? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. 
He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Psalm 103 Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed, he remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower in the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. Proverbs chapter 21 In the Lord's hand, the king's heart is a stream of water that he channels towards all who please him. A person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the unplowed field of the wicked, produce sin. The plans of the diligent lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. A fortune made by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor and a deadly snare. The violence of the wicked will drag them away, for they refuse to do what is right. The way of the guilty is devious, but the conduct of the innocent is upright. Better to live on a corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. The wicked crave evil. Their neighbors get no mercy from them. When a mocker is punished, the simple gain wisdom. By paying attention to the wise, they get knowledge. The righteous one takes note of the house of the wicked and brings the wicked to ruin. Whoever shuts their ears to the cry of the poor will also cry out and not be answered. A gift given in secret soothes anger, and a bribe concealed in the cloak pacifies great wrath. When justice is done, it brings joy to the righteous, but terror to evildoers. Whoever strays from the path of prudence 
comes to rest in the company of the dead. Whoever loves pleasure will become poor. Whoever loves wine and olive oil will never be rich. The wicked become a ransom for the righteous, and the unfaithful for the upright. Better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome and nagging wife. The wise store up choice food and olive oil, but fools gulp theirs down. Whoever pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity and honour. One who is wise can go up against the city of the mighty and pull down the stronghold in which they trust. Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. The proud and arrogant person, Mocker is his name, behaves with insolent fury. The craving of a sluggard will be the death of him because his hands refuse to work. All day long he craves for more, but the righteous give without sparing. The sacrifice of the wicked is detestable, how much more so when brought with evil intent. A false witness will perish, but a careful listener will testify successfully. The wicked put up a bold front, but the upright give thought to their ways. There is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord.